let me bring in Mr. Frederick Fleets, who's joining us now on this broadcast. Now, Mr. Fleets, it appears that the United States has pulled off all stops in, in terms of how it is trying to woo India and what we are looking at this moment play out in, in terms of what happened, especially in those opening remarks on the lawns of the White House where President Biden said that this is going to be an important relationship for the Americans. Why is it that the India-US equation has acquired the significance that it has? Is it to do with the rise of China? Well, the Biden administration certainly has pulled off all the, stop, all the stops. This is only the third head of state visit during the Biden presidency and addresses at joint sessions of Congress are unusual and it's unheard of for a head of state to speak to Congress twice. It's quite an honor for Prime Minister Modi. It's bipartisan recognition in the United States of the crucial U.S.-India relationship, not just in terms of economics, but in terms of security. We have a common adversary, China. We have to work together to, to counter growing Chinese aggression and influence in the Asia-Pacific region. There also are concerns with India about Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. We want India to work with us on the Ukraine conflict, to stop cooperating with Russia. And I think we'll make some progress on that. But the key issue here is a threat from China. And I think that's what, what most of the Modi-Biden discussions will be about. Absolutely, indeed. Now, India has a legacy in terms of how it has conducted its foreign policy. Earlier, it was defined as, as, as the policy of non-alignment. But we've left the idea of non-alignment behind us. But the substance of it in terms of pursuing a policy that is beneficial for India without taking sides still continues because what we have is a policy of strategic autonomy. So India clearly has not taken sides in the Russia-Ukraine war. The Americans, of course, would want to change that. But my question is much larger here. Now, what we are looking at play out is, is the United States that is willing to share even its defense technologies with India. Um, and, and what do you think has changed in the last one decade or so that the Americans are, in fact, quite clearly now wooing India to be in their camp? Oh, is that to me? Yes, Mr. Fleets, that's for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think there's a recognition that uh, we have moved on to a new era. Uh, the era after the Cold War means that nations have to take different positions. India is no longer situated between two superpowers. India is facing an aggressive foe that is infringing on its territories, is aggressively standing against it. And this is no, I, I understand the non-aligned position and India wants to pursue an independent foreign policy. But given the growing threat from China to India and to the world, it's time for a much stronger alliance, much stronger cooperation against this threat. I think we're moving in that direction. And concerning Russia, India is the largest democracy. Russia does not respect democracy and its aggressive invasion of Ukraine is not a U.S.-Russia issue. It's a global threat to democracy and international security. That's why the U.S. would like to work with India much closer on this conflict. Absolutely, indeed. And the Indian Prime Minister has said that it is important to ensure that the way forward is, of course, through dialogue and talks. And the Indian Prime Minister also said that India has taken the side of peace because that is the only way that we can, of course, resolve these pretty difficult issues uh, in the context of the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, Jessica Stone, if I can bring you in on this, where the Indian Prime Minister and also the American President, you know, touched upon the points of convergence in the political systems in both the nations. The, for instance, the constitution of both these nations begin with the three words, we the people. And this was something that was highlighted by both the leaders there. Uh, and they also touched about the importance of people-to-people -people contacts within the American and the Indian context. Tell us a bit more about you know, how the United States, of course, wants to work on this front. Well, people-to-people -people contact uh, in the context of American politics is actually becoming even more important because increasingly Indian American voters are deciding elections here in this country. Of course, they make up about 1% of the U.S. population, 4.5 million people, but they make up, uh, they're very close to making up the largest number of foreign students here. Uh, and in critical 
battleground states where there are Indian American voters. Uh, Indian American advocates will tell you we're deciding elections in Georgia, which has been a very hotly contested state, uh, what we would call a purple state, but definitely turning blue, so more Democrat. Uh, also, uh, Wisconsin, Virginia, uh, other critical battleground states in U.S. Polit political circles are also uh, really increasingly, according to Indian American uh, electoral analysts, being decided by this group of voters. And so you do see uh, President Biden courting Indian American voters, having these seven or 8,000 people on the South Lawn, which is very unprecedented, uh, having a vice president, a uh, running mate of Indian uh, descent alongside him, uh, regular outreach to the Indian American community. And of course, we know that uh, former President Donald Trump did the same, right? He, ho he introduced uh, Prime Minister Modi back in Houston at that 2019 rally. Uh, and then Prime Minister Modi did him the same favor in his home uh, city uh, in, in India, introducing uh, Pre President Trump when he was on the campaign trail. So there are critical ties in electoral politics and definitely something for President Biden to gain electorally, as of course he is a candidate for the office again. Absolutely, indeed. That, that of course is the political background of it. And Mr. Frederick Fleet, uh, you know, as, as we look at the visuals that are being beamed out of the White House of, of you know, both the leaders, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and also the American President. Uh, Joe Biden, there seems to be a clear connect between the two of them. But when it comes to the strategy of dealing with China, the United States and the European powers seem to have points of divergence. Where the European nations, it is France and Germany, would want to deal with China differently, but the United States want to deal with it differently. Do you think the United States may encounter similar such issues with India when it has to deal with China? There are some divergence between the United States and Europe on China, but not all European states view the threat the same. I think the British are closer to the United States about how China is exploiting trade. And I think India, although it does not, it does not support the aggressive approach to, the, to China of the United States, I think India is closer to the U.S. In, just because Indian territory has been compromised by China. China is next door to India, and I, I think the two nations are closer. They're, India is not quite where the U.S. is in terms of decoupling from China and taking a much more aggressive approach. My guess is that there'll be a discussion again about the BRICS Bank and, and India collaborating uh, with China on an alternate reserve currency during, during, the, during this meeting. My hope is India will move away from that. Uh, but but I, I think there's some differences, but I do believe India is closer to the U.S. on the threat from China than most European states are. Interesting. Uh, and Jessica Stone, if I can bring you in on this now, there are a whole host of different issues, you know, that are in fact being discussed. It's not just defense cooperation. There are stuff like, you know, increasing the number of American consulates in India about cooperation in space, in semiconductor technologies. Uh, these, these are all pretty important issues. Do you think India and the United States will be able to in fact forge stronger ties on all of these fronts? I think it's an imperative for the Americans that India does make progress, especially in supply chain resilience. The United States has set a very clear line in the sand that it no longer wants to allow a lot of its semiconductor technology to go to China, and it doesn't want to be buying most of its semiconductor technology uh, and manufacturing capacity from China. Uh, so it is looking for partners around the world with whom to partner more closely on chip fabrication, on chip development, on chip pa uh, packaging. So that's why you saw the announcement by Micron of that big packaging plant. That's different than manufacturing, I think we should point out, but it is a step towards it. And, and, and if there were to be an actual agreement from uh, semiconductor chip technology to be transferred to India, to be able to be manufactured in India, that would be sort of the next step along this road of uh, increasing manufacturing capacity for specifically for semiconductors. And there's really a race around the world, right, to produce these incredibly important uh, components in almost every piece of technology around the world. So yeah, a big, big push by the United States on that score. Absolutely, indeed. And Mr. Frederick Fleet, let me in fact give you the last word on this. You know, with the new geopolitics, the realities that are emerging around the world with the Russia-Ukraine war, you know, being clearly one of those issues that has dominated world politics over the course of the last 16 odd months. Um, and also what has been said today in, in that address that was made by both the leaders. 
do you also believe that this is now going to be the most defining and the most important relationship that the United States has with any country in the world at this moment? Because India-US relationship is clearly something that the United States will be relying on to take on China. It will be an extremely important relationship. I, I, I don't see how the U.S. can take on China without India. But I'll add something else here. Mm -hmm. There is an urgent need for an interlocutor in the war in Ukraine. And maybe Prime Minister Modi could play that role. No one really knows who can negotiate a ceasefire and peace talks in this conflict. I think Modi is probably on the, the uh, among the five people who could possibly be acceptable to both sides. My hope is that that will be discussed uh, during the meetings between the two leaders. Pretty sure that's that's an issue that will definitely come up for uh, during the course of the conversation when when uh, the two leaders, of course, are speaking with each other and possibility of interlocutor. Uh, India is, of course, well placed considering that it has got good relations with the West and also good relations with Russia. But it'll be difficult to see as to, you know, it'll be interesting rather to see as to how all of these progresses. Thank you very much indeed to Mr. Frederick Fleet and also to Jessica Stone for joining us on this broadcast here on Vyond.